Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today's channeling is a very good timely channel as we are entering into Mental Health Awareness Month. During the month of May, it is an opportunity for all of us to recognize our mental health, which is just as important as our physical health as well, right? And so it's my pleasure to be able to bring forward issues of mental health awareness during this time. With that, I am responding to numerous requests that I've had to channel Chris Cornell in the afterlife. So some of you may recognize that his name, Chris Cornell, he was the uh, front man, the singer in the band Soundgarden, and he died a very untimely death. And there's a lot of question about his passing. And so I'm going to chat with him not to get into the drama, but to recognize the truth and the power of the energy that we as human beings express and feel within ourselves and how our moods, our attitudes and our mental health impact us as people. They limit us or they can provide us with incredible opportunities for expansion, growth, and happiness. So today I welcome in Chris Cornell. Hi Chris, nice to see you. He says, hi, nice to see you, Bridget. He kind of sits across from me at our, my kitchen table where the magic happens and he puts his hands on the table. He says, nice to see you, Bridget. And it literally feels like we're in a radio, almost like in a radio studio and we're chatting. We're gonna have an interview. And so thank you so much. This is a very important time to raise awareness about mental health. And I know that channeling you will help to do that for many, many of the viewers. Now, your death has a lot of components to it. And for many, it's very tragic as you committed suicide by hanging. I know this, this was very public information. And I know that you were being treated for the mental health issue of depression. I believe it was depression. I think it was depression. I don't know that for sure, but we'll find out. Maybe you can clarify that. And I want to talk to you, Chris, about, about the, the way you were feeling and the circumstances around your choice to complete suicide. So let's, let's talk a bit about that. All right, he says, thank you. First of all, this is an important platform. He says, I, I want to be heard and I want it to be recognized that just because you think that you're, and he's using the F word, effed up in the head, it doesn't mean that you're lost and that you're a loss and that you're just done, it's over, it's out kind of energy is what he's making me feel. He says, just because you think you're effed up in the head, it doesn't mean like all hope is lost. It's not. And so this platform is an opportunity for me to get it into some people's thick heads that it's important to recognize mental health. It's important to recognize when you're not feeling right. And it's important to keep, keep, just the tiniest bit of hope alive within you and to keep asking for help, keep reaching out. You're not a burden to the people that love you. You're not a burden. I felt, I felt like my attitude, the way that I was feeling, the way that my mind was just effing, he's swearing a lot, he's using that word a lot. He's saying effing it up. And, and just so you guys know, I don't have a problem swearing, but I don't know if YouTube will censor that. I don't know. Um, he's saying, just because your mind is effed up, he says, it doesn't mean you're effed up. It doesn't mean that everything's totally a loss. But he also says that I felt like, I know, I know. He says, I know, I know. And he's very, his hands are very, he's kind of st stable, like stagnant, like on the table, like his hands are crossed. He's just on the table and he's talking to me like this and kind of his hands are very much, and it's coming right out kind of from the belly, which is the solar plexus where the spirit chakra is. So he's speaking with soul, like real deep knowing. He wants the vibration to come through and resonance with, resonate with you. He says, I know that, he says, I know my actions, my mood, my feeling, my 
disconnection affected everybody around me. I know it affected my family, and I know it affected my wife and my, ch my children. He says, children, child, I feel like there's one, maybe two. There's two kids involved somehow. One for sure his, and maybe, I don't know if there's a stepchild, or if there's two kids, I don't know. Um, they're not all that old. It doesn't look like they're that old to me, just so you guys know. And he says, and my music, my work, my band, he says, you let everyone down. So not only do you feel, and he says the S word, not only do you feel crappy, but he uses the S word, but you feel even worse because you're letting everybody around you down. So it makes the depression energy, the depression even thicker. So, so Chris, it, and diagnosis labeling is a necessity, I believe as Bridget, that diagnosis or labeling is a necessity at times because we need to have a multifaceted approach to mental health and wellness. It needs to be healthcare focused as well as counseling focused as well as alternative holistic homeopathy therapies. There needs to be a collaboration approach. There's not just mental health in the traditional physical medical field and there's not just mental health in just counseling. There's, there's so many ways that we can as unique individuals work on this issue and become better people and a better society. So Chris, tell us about, talk about diagnosis and label. And what would you say that you closely identified with? Like you said, your mind was effed up. So what was that for you? He says, um, he says, you know, I bat, he says, I battled depression for years. I always just kind of had times when I was real, real uh, low. And I thought it was just kind of a moody part of me. That was just who I was, kind of moody. And uh, it made for some really great music, he says. Really great song. And when you get into those really deep places inside of you and you're just, he says, you're searching, you're just, you're looking. I really want to use my hands, but he's not using his hands. But when I talk, I use my hands. Um, you're searching for for answers. Why? How, how can I, how can I feel better? How can I, why am I in this place? There's gotta be a reason, you know, there's gotta be a purpose here. It's gotta be some kind of meaning in this and, and you're searching for meaning and, and that can create some really great lyrics, great music. And I, uh, I did self-medicate most of my life and he says, you know, marijuana and, um, I experimented with some other, uh, he says mood altering or mind altering drugs. So I don't know what exactly types it was, but like party kind of drugs or rock scene kind of drugs is what he's showing me. He says, but you know, and alcohol, he says alcohol, which is sort of ironic. He says, isn't it? It's kind of ironic that someone who would be depressed would drink alcohol because as you know, it's a depressant, not a stimulant, but he says, I think it's because your, your body wants to match. It wants some kind of commonality, understanding. It wants to be understood. And so when you feel depressed and you drink, it's not intended to pick you up. It's intended to help you escape. It's intended as an understanding, like the feeling of the alcohol that the alcohol gives you is a feeling that's familiar to you already. And so it comes together and then together there's like this, he says, just like this laid back kind of flowing feeling and it's not even a good feeling it's not even a good state to be in but it's better than the alternative which is being really conscious of what you're not understanding seeing or knowing what you're what you're uh, how do you explain this he says it's better than the alternative which was just being in darkness and being alone he says, I would describe depression as alone, alone, the darkest you've ever felt. And you're on autopilot most days and you're just numb. And in the days that you're not, you just feel so bad. It's hard. For those of you who are watching, you, many of you can relate to this. At some degree, everybody feels depression. This is Chris Cornell saying this. Everybody feels depression. But when it gets a hold of you so tight, you just... And it's not like a demon. It's, it's like a, it's like an incredible weight or a burden that you carry that you can't explain. You can't, there's, there's not a way to really understand or to share, articulate with others, to explain it to others in a way that they can understand when they don't feel it. And so that creates more distance. And 
so for if you you ask specifically he says you ask specifically about diagnosis or label and uh, depression definitely is one of them but there's uh there's another component for me and that is with the high anxiety uh you could explain it kind of as impulsive um almost triggered anxiety almost like panic attack but Oh, it's, it's sort of like, so he's making me feel like it's sort of like a manic episodes or manic pranic, manic, um, like a bipolar almost. It, is that more likely? He says, yeah, that's right on. He said right on. But he says the, that's how it feels, he says, but that's not what's diagnosed. He says that's not what's identified right away. So the first thing you got to deal with when you go in to get, you know, some help for this is any kind of mental health disorders, he says, it's, it's a mystery, it's mysterious, and everybody is affected, impacted differently. And he says, I had very, uh, he's trying to explain like anxiety and depression together, but he said he would have times where he could be super productive and really on, which is almost a manic kind of a thing, where you can focus, hyper-focus and really, um, dig in and be really productive and and during those times he says i really felt as though i like this is the state i want to be in but it's really not the state you want to be in if you ask anybody that's that's has manic episodes or or bipolar in any way they would be able to relate to that that you you prefer that over the the heaviness the the numbness the the extreme disconnect you'd prefer the high higher um intensity of energy but i don't okay so he's making me feel like it wasn't necessarily the bipolar piece wasn't necessarily diagnosed and i don't think he was exactly that either i don't think it was exactly that i think he, his depression would go so low and then layered on top of that anxiety and so anxiety can you talk about that a little bit can you talk a little bit about that labeling or that diagnosis of, of anxiety? Like what, so you've, you've done a great job in articulating the feeling of depression energy, but there's this shaking inside, this pop bottle fizzy, caffeinated constantly feeling that doesn't allow you to relax. That is an anxiety that I can also feel coupled with that. But I'm not sure because surrounding your death, there was definitely some question and concern about the medication that you were then given for the depression energy the anxiety energy that it, i'm sorry that it, the anxiety that it created depression see i don't know what came first the chicken or the egg was it did you have anxiety were you treated for anxiety and then it resulted in depression that caused the the action and the choices to the choice to kill yourself or was it depression layered with anxiety but the depression was the focus for the treatment initially that it created a because it almost like it almost looks like it got worse it had to get worse before it got better and there's a piece missing like whatever medication that you were given i understand that you had a medication correct yes he says yeah yes yeah yes he said that's right that's that's right medication you were given it's almost like there was another medication that needed to go with it in order for it to be balanced because it was like it could be a shock to your system otherwise and people respond very differently biochemically and um, to medications especially psychiatric medications and as we all know because we've heard about that and that i think is a fear and a phobia of mental health care and being being on medication people are scared of it all of a sudden and in some cases, yes, there are side effects and extremes. So I can't tell if, Chris, your anxiety was first. He says, anxiety, anxiety, anxiety is bad. He said, anxiety is bad. He said, it's bad. You think it's going to make you productive. And that's the, the anxiety he's addressing with the manic energy. So when I feel the manic, it's the anxiety. And sometimes it pushes you, he says, pushes you to do better, be better, because you're constantly alert and you're you're really hyper aware of everything and so you can be better with like your music and your your ability to follow through and to make the connections but he says but that only can last so long and then there's the low and the low is where the baseline he says of depression is and then once you go below that surface you can't come back up it's harder to come back up and so then the depression comes down to meet you in or the anxiety comes down to meet you in the depression state and it creates uh a very um, deep hole, he says, a very deep hole.
That's how he's explaining how his experience. This is all over the place. I'm like all over the place on this. He says, that's, he says, oh, I'm sorry. He says, oh, I'm sorry, Bridget. That's intended to help you to feel what it feels like. <laughs> well, it does not feel easy. It feels extremely challenging for any of you who are watching that are dealing with mental health issues. Just know that, please know that you're not alone. Even if you feel lonely or alone or disconnected, you are not alone. You're not. Not only do you have people, resources, hotlines, counseling, all sorts of availability of healthcare providers and resources, and I don't want to hear excuses. Don't give me the, re oh, I can't afford it, and oh, it's this. There's 1-800 number free hotlines. There's all sorts of stuff, you guys. Don't give me the excuses. I don't need to hear that, and neither do you. There's no reason to, be, to feel excused. Because, excuses, because your healing helpers are right here too, like God. The universe, creator, source, whatever you believe is a higher power. You know, you have angels and guides and loved ones in, in the afterlife that are cheering for you and rooting you on. And the energy of the depression or the anxiety that you're feeling is simply a tool to inform you of the incredible capacity and the depths of the love and the compassion, the sensitivity that you have. You deserve to feel love, compassion, and sensitivity within yourself. And that's the opposite coin of depression and anxiety. Embracing our natural ability as a spirit, as a soul, as an energetic being is the point of our, of our life journey, of the process of being human. And sometimes it can be, make us crazy. Our minds can create some mental chatter and disconnection. And so we need to actively invite the mind into our human experience and not make it the ego, the villain, but incorporate it into our spiritual awareness, into our energetic flow states. It's, it's a wholeness approach. So you are not alone. You're not. You're never alone. You always have your beautiful spirit and your sweet soul, even if you can't, don't feel like you deserve that kind of special attention. You are. You are already all that. And so with this conversation with you, Chris, can you talk a little bit about the medication component? Because my understanding is what I feel, I was really sensitive about doing this channeling with you, Chris, because of the medication component, because I do not want anybody who's watching this, this channeling with Chris Cornell from The Afterlife, as we're talking about mental health and medication, I did not want anyone to watch this and take take away from it that medicine is bad. It is not bad. Medicine is not bad. Nothing is, is a be all end all. Nothing is a magic pill or a magic bullet. However, like I said, it's a collaborative process. It's body, mind, heart, and soul. It's spiritual, it's homeopathic, it's, it's energetic, and it's mental and physical. And we have medications for a reason to help support us. But the medications and the diagnosis of, of what's going on is a mystery. And so you have to find a healthcare provider, a mental health care provider that really listens to you and understands what's going on for you, not just here's the canned approach. There's no off the shelf cure for depression, for anxiety, for bipolar disorder, for all of the other kinds of mental health things that we deal with as society, as people, okay? So medication is not the bad guy, but Chris, I do know that you have a very strong message about that. So would you please share that with us? He says, you can't say medication is good or bad. He said, it's, it's, it's both, he said, and, it, and it's neither of those things. He says, in my case, the medication did contribute to my death. It was the direct link to the cause of my death, he says. But it wasn't an overdose situation. It created the energy in my body that allowed for a toxic situation, a toxic level of, um, I think he says a toxic situation to be the outcome. I'm, there's pieces now, I'm, there's pieces, let's try to. He says the medication levels in my body were toxic for me. It's not that they were inappropriately given to me, it's that the aftercare and the level of my autonomy, he says, my accountability. I could have said something. I didn't feel right. 
as soon as I started taking the medication, I did not feel right. It was not right. And it was like the second or third try and I just gave up. I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to take the medication. Did you stop taking the medication because you didn't feel right, Chris? Is that what I'm hearing you say? You're saying you started medication. It looks like there was two or three, I don't know if there was two or three tries, different kinds of medication you tried. I don't know, but there's two or three. I see two or three and then, or it could have been two or three days two or three days. He's, no, he's making me feel like this is the first time that I got this medication and it didn't work for me. It, it had the opposite effect is what he's saying. And that can happen. He said, that's why there's side effects. That's why you have to be monitored by a healthcare professional for a provider. He says, but you also have to recognize it for yourself. And he says, I did. I recognized I wasn't feeling right. So I stopped, but I didn't, <laughs> he's telling me I didn't, um, and that was a problem is what he's saying. That was a problem. It doesn't look like he, I don't know if he didn't tell his doctor he stopped or if he tried to tell somebody, but because of the timing, they didn't get back to him and it was affecting him so much that he, it just made him, it almost looks like he cold turkeyed it and he just couldn't handle, his body just went, what? Get me out of here now. And so whew, he killed himself. And so it is a reaction to medication, but Chris Cornell is also saying, he's also saying that this can be, it can be prevented because it can be managed. He's saying that, Chris is saying this can be managed. So do you believe that the medication was the bad thing or like, how could this have changed? How could this have been different? How could this have been different? He says, I could have, I could have advocated more for myself, but he says, it's hard to do that when you're in a, a state of mind where your mind isn't right, you're effed up. He says, so the people around you become your biggest advocates. And at that time, I wasn't even with my, my wife. I was out. I was out. It looks like he was on the road or something. He wasn't with the people that really knew him, really loved him well. And I see a phone call and then I see something not right and seeming okay, but not totally okay. And just kind of starting to say goodbye to let go himself, trying to, starting to decide that I'm done. This is over. And he says, I didn't, he says, quite honestly, I didn't want to go through that again. I didn't want to go through this crazy medication uh, bouncy house thing. But he said, if I cared enough about myself and about the life that I was blessed with, he says, the life I was given was a blessing. And if I cared enough about myself and my, that life, the value of that life, and the quality of it, I would have, maybe I would have recognized, he says, maybe I would have recognized that it was worth it. So did you need medication? He says, yes, there's no, there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever. No wavering energy. He's like, yes, he needed medication. Definitely needed medication, but he didn't have the right medication or the right combination of medication. And he knew it. He could feel his body. You guys, you gotta be your own advocates here. This is a great message. He could feel his body reacting not well. Then, then you need to be contacting your doctor. Then you need to be talking to somebody 24 seven. Then you need to not be alone at all, like even just to go to bed in a hotel room or what have you. You need to be with people that can help you get through that and don't detox yourself. Do it with a healthcare professional, maybe even talk to a naturopathic doctor, a homeopathy person, get some assistance with your counselor, your psychiatrist and your healthcare provider as well as your mental healthcare provider. Our bodies are all different, you guys. Chris, I'm so sorry that this that you had to deal with this and go through this and that your family did, because you're making me feel like there's, like the pain that you, you feel right now, the, the greatest suffering is what he's, Chris Cornell is making me feel is the greatest suffering is the family. And that it's almost like your wife knew, I think you were married, it was either a wife or a partner, a long time partner, it's a woman who has a baby, a, a child of yours, at least one child of yours. And she, like she knew, she just knew, she knew something wasn't right. She knew you were off for a day or two. She knew it. And maybe the guilt or the blame that she carries for herself maybe can be cleared through this contact and this conversation. Personal accountability and empowerment is so key. And it's really difficult when our minds are not really running the show, not really all together and not really on board with the overall of what's going on. This is why you guys, it's not just, we don't just move through our human life with our physical bodies and our mind. We have an energetic component to us, which is our heart, our emotions, which connect us to the mind. They are messengers for us and our spirits. And so the heart is in between the mind and the soul in your physical body on purpose. 
It's an in-between negotiator, a messenger. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful connected place that gives us so much information about ourselves. And we have got to stand in our power of our emotions in our spirit, in our mood, in our attitude. We've got to stand in the power of that. Even when we feel powerless, we have to find the power. And sometimes it requires leaning on our friends, our families, telling them things that we know that is going to be difficult for them to hear, that you're suffering or you're struggling, but it's going to be better than the alternative, which is losing you and having to go to somebody like Bridget, like me, and contact them in the afterlife. Mm -mm. You don't want to have to have a medium to help your family understand why you left this planet, why you took your own life, or, or to understand what you were going through after the fact. You've got to be able to get the support structures and systems in place that you need. And they're already here, your angels, your guides, your human friends, whether they're online friends or in-person friends, not everybody has family that they can rely upon. It might even be the loving energy of your animals, your, your dog or your cat. And, and we know that works for Freddie Mercury too, don't we? And then Chris Cornell just went, oh, Freddie, yeah. Yes, Freddie Mercury. Yes, and then Chris just got out a guitar and it's red with a little bit of black on it and then it's got white in the center. He just gets out a guitar. Now I'm assuming, did you play guitar? He must have. I don't really know. You guys are gonna sound so stupid. I don't really know a lot about Soundgarden. I don't really know a lot about Chris Cornell. And so, I don't know, I'm assuming because I can see it. So there we go. All right, thank you so much, Chris, for being here for bringing up this very important topic. Lots of information shared, lots of information shared. And for you who are watching, if you are in a state where you know that your mental health is not in alignment for you, reach out, get some assistance. If it's, if it's in the early stages, you can check out, you know, do some things with naturopathic medicine or um, do some things to help your body, your chi, your prana, you know, maybe yoga, maybe alternative therapies like um, chiropractic care or um, energetic response therapies that may actually help to get your energy flowing so your mood just feels better. Maybe you need some supplements. Maybe you need a better diet. You know, a lot of stuff that we, in, that we take in, our sugars and our, our excess carbohydrates and our caffeines, which I do have, actually, I don't know if this is caffeine. I, th I don't think it is. It's actually a um, natural based coffee. So it's different, a little bit different, but the things that we take in really do express in our feelings and our emotions and our bodies. Our bodies give us so much information and we ignore it. Like everything outside of us is our expert, not within us, but really it's within you. So start listening to your body and allow yourself to make healthier choices for your life. That's how it starts. And if you're in a state where you need a counselor, go get one. A licensed clinical social worker, a social worker is a great counselor. If you don't wanna to go to a psychologist or you're not in a state where you wanna to go to a psychiatrist or there are a lot of programs through employee assistance programs with employers that you can go confidential, confidentially um, you can look on your benefits package or on your employee, employee website, employer website to find information about free counseling services often will be offered. And online, there are 1-800 numbers, crisis hotlines that you can call even if you're not in the depth of crisis, but you're not sure where to go when you need some resources. You can also refer to your local agency. So you might have a human service agency or a county government agency that you can look up online or find a, a, a phone number for that can give you access to mental health care resources. Sometimes public health organizations in your local county or city can offer those kinds of services to you as well. Also, there's support groups. There's churches, there's religious organizations that provide support groups like AA or Teen Al-Anon, for example. So there is, there is, is a structure already. You don't have to create one. You just have to allow yourself the opportunity to reach out and make some connections so that you can be healthy in your mind and your body, your heart and your soul. So this is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here at Above Life Channel for this very important channeling message with Chris Cornell in the afterlife. Remember the purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to give you hope because this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Oh, just live it. Thanks for watching.